Hello, today I'm going to show you this integral question. It's from MIT's Integration B, uh, the qualifying round in 2017, and it's question number two. So, first thing to notice is that we have an infinity in one of our limits. And at the end then, when we go to substitute our limits in, we can't just substitute in an infinity. So what we do is we rewrite this then and say it's going to be the limit as some number which we'll call a goes to infinity. And then we'll take the integral, but with limits where the one is still the same, but our infinity now is an a instead. So it should be the same idea, but at the end, we're going to basically plug in a and then think about as a goes to infinity, how does that change things? And I'm just going to rewrite this as x to the minus 2 multiplied by log of x. All with respect then to dx. So we're going to use by parts. Uh, if we think about our u as log of x, our u dash is going to be 1 over x. Our v dash is x to the minus 2. So our v is going to be x raised to the power gives minus 1. Divide by the new power would be like divided by negative 1. So we can just bring that to the top and say it's minus x to the minus 1. So then our integral i is going to be equal to the limit as a goes to infinity of, well, we can think about our first part then. It's going to be u times v. So it's minus log of x. I'm sorry, that should be an x in there. Over x evaluated from 1 to a minus the integral of u dash v. Well, we have 1 on x and another minus 1 on x. So the minuses will make a plus. And altogether, then, it's x to the minus 2. And again, this is evaluated at 1 and a. So we keep going. Our limit is still the same. a goes to infinity. We'll plug in our values for this uh, integral, then, our limits. So it's going to be minus log of a over a. And then minus minus, so that makes a plus. Log of 1 over 1. Uh, the next part, then, when we integrate this thing, what are we going to get? Oh, x to the minus 1, dividing by the new power, we'll bring a minus out the front. But this thing is going to be evaluated again at 1 and a. So we can keep going, plug everything in. And the limit then, we'll just put our, our limits of the first, of this final part in before we think about using our limit. So everything else is going to stay the same, minus log of a over a. What we can notice though, is that log of 1 is just 0. So this whole term just goes to zero. And then let's think about putting our limits into minus x to the minus 1. So what we have is going to be a plus minus 1 on a. And then minus minus, that makes a plus, of 1 on 1. So we can keep going. And what we can see now is then we need to put our limit in. That's the only step that we have left to do. And when we substitute our limits in then, some of these are going to be known. So log a over a, we know goes to 0. 1 over a, we know goes to 0. So both of the first terms are 0. And when we have 1 over 1, well, there's no a's in there, so that can just be brought out the side as well. So the entire answer is just going to be 1. If we wanted to check sort of general quick ideas of our limits, if we don't know the, the known limits, here we have a fraction of two things. So what I always like to do is think about the sort of the, the graph that these make. And if we plot our just a straight line graph, so x, and then log of x does like a little decay. So basically, because this one is decaying faster than this one is decaying, the top is going to, as a fraction, the a is going to have more impact than the log of a. So therefore, the a is going to get bigger first, and the whole fraction will go to zero. Similar thing if we look at a and minus one. Just imagine it's one, not minus one. We get a line like this, and we can see our a line goes up to infinity a lot quicker than our one line does. So the whole thing should go down to zero. Uh, there's probably some proper rules for that, but that's not in this not in this question. Uh, so beautiful, yeah. The entire answer was one. That should be everything. Thanks.